seen as one of the greatest minds to have ever lived, as well as one of the greatest scientific pioneers during the golden age of scientific enlightenment, was that of Albert Einstein, and his revelations surrounding the understanding of the very fabric of our reality. These discoveries are still only being proven in the modern day, and have left the scientific world in a state far more advanced than before his introductions to these strange concepts. What many are not aware of though is that the FBI have thousands of documents on the world-renowned physicists. The FBI investigated Albert Einstein after a string of comments he made criticizing the United States, with one document reading as follows. Are we safe with atomic energy? As long as we have men like Einstein on our list, no. Watch out for him. End quote. One of the most interesting documents details that Albert Einstein helped the Germans build a death ray. After conducting an investigation, the following documents were penned by the FBI. Einstein was one of the many distinguished Germans who lent their influence and prestige to German communists prior to the rise of Hitler. In 1940, the army declined to clear Einstein in connection with the limited field of study for which his service was needed after the Navy had given its assent. Einstein publicly declared in 1947 that the only real party in France with a solid organization and a precise program was the Communist Party. In May 1948, he and ten former Nazi research brain trusters held a secret meeting to observe a new beam of light secret weapon which could be operated from planes to destroy cities. This is according to the Arlington Daily, dated on the 21st of May 1948. The intelligence division of the army subsequently advised the Bureau that this information could have no foundation, and advised the machine would be effective outside the range of a few feet. End quote. Investigations continued, and declassified papers suggest the death ray was actually built. Interestingly, it wasn't just Einstein that had links with this machine. A few years back, the FBI released 64 pages of unreleased documents. This includes things like papers and documents that were collected shortly after Tesla passed away. For years now, theories have been floating around as to why Tesla's work was collected by the government. Some have said that Tesla's work wasn't important and wouldn't have impacted us. If this was the case, then why did the US government quickly swoop in and collect his work? These papers would cause many people to put forward their theories on what the papers contained, and one of the reasons people believe they collected his work is because he created an incredible machine, a type of ray that would be able to take down enemies from miles away. Tesla's work obviously caught the attention of the FBI, as they wanted to come through what he'd been working on. One of their reasons for doing this was to ensure that any work of his didn't get into the wrong hands. For this reason, they decided it would be best if the documents remained in the property of the Office of Alien Property Custodian. This was, however, until the documents and other pieces of Tessa's work mysteriously disappeared after the war. Interestingly, enough discussion had been created that the public was aware of some of these alleged inventions and it even caused citizens to question director J. Edgar Hoover about what Tesla had been working on. These are some extracts from the official FBI documents that got released. On the 26th and 27th of January 1943, an examination was made of the technical papers of Dr. Nikola Tesla, which after his decease had been stored in the Manhattan warehouse in New York City. This examination was made for the purpose of determining if any ideas of significant value in the present United States war effort could be found among his possessions. Participating in this examination were Mr. John C. Newton, New York Office of the Alien Property Custodian, Dr. Charles of the Washington Office of Scientific Research and Development, and John G. Trump of the Office of Scientific Research and Development of Massachusetts Institute on Technology. The following papers, which were regarded as typical of Nikola Tesla's writings and thoughts in the period of 1925 to 1942, 
were removed for the purpose of record and listed below in random order in which they were found, together with a brief individual abstract. Exhibit A, Possibilities of Electrostatic Generators An updated article probably written around 1934 discussing the possibilities as a source of high voltage DC power of the Van de Graaff type of electrostatic belt generator. The article states correctly the electrostatic principle employed in this device and points out that suck generators are not suitable for commercial high powered applications, though of undoubted scientific value. Tesla's wireless tower erected in 1902 on Long Island is stated in this memorandum to have charged to 30 million volts. Exhibit B Reactive Force of Glaricin and Dynamite An undated memorandum involving some calculation of the explosive power of certain compounds and then deviating to a discussion of the possibility of transmitting power by mechanical vibrations along the Earth's crust. Exhibit C Process of Degasifying, Refining and Purifying Metals A 40-page memorandum probably written about 1930 dealing with the above subject and proposing new theories of capillarity and surface tension. These correspondence indicate that this has been subject to two various industrial companies. Exhibit D Replying to Antwerp regarding the generation of high voltage and acceleration of charged particles. This document dated 8th of November 1935 answers questions raised by Soviet engineers and scientists regarding Tesla's proposal of Ray. From this answer, it's deduced that the proposal concerned the generation of high voltages by electrostatic means. These means consisted of a high voltage terminal presumably supported on an insulated column and charged by a gaseous charge conveying medium passing between ground and terminal. The ideas contained in this memorandum are fairly similar to the bulk conveyor electrostatic generator methods proposed by Van de Graaff and do not appear to offer any unusual features. End quote. So what do you make of these declassified files? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.